How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me again on tea. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know how it looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee you. I talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And today we're gonna have uh, two little different things. I'm gonna make a cold chicken consomme in this pot right here. I love consomme and I like cold consomme and I like hot consomme and I like chicken consomme and I like any other kind of consomme anybody has, you know? And uh, let me turn the fire on here. That's the wrong one, I always do get the wrong one. Oh yeah, that is water. I put some water in there that I'm gonna put some chicken wings. I put the chicken wings in there and cook them till the meat fall, will want to fall off of it. And then I, I let it cool to get the meat, the, the chicken out, and take it off the bone. Take the bones out and then just let it clear itself up and put it in the refrigerator, it comes out cold conservated. It's very good too. Now into this pot right here, I'm gonna put uh, six chicken wings. Go in there like nice little cheering, dude. Now how you going, chicken? Nice wings. Two, there. Now you can make it, you can also use mixed thighs with this, chicken thighs. I'll never forget the time I was in Shreveport with somebody and I had a cage, a full bleed cage with me and uh, in a place where you could get all the chicken you could eat. We were sitting there and the waitress came over and said, uh, anything else I can get for you? And this Cajun from Marksville said, I would like uh, two ties and a wing. And she looked at me and said, uh, what did he say? I said, he wants two ties in a wing. I thought she was gonna shoot us both, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> now, into this, I'm gonna put, I could put ties in there, but I decided just to use wings today. I'm gonna put about uh, a tablespoonful of steak sauce. Come on, get out of there now. I wanna get all of you in there that I possibly can. Boy, that spoon's too big to get out in there. It is. Stir, stir that around a little bit. And then I'm gonna put uh, about a half a cup of dry white wine. Yeah. And I stir, I want that to look, be right. Put a little garlic powder in there. This garlic powder. Oh boy, this is good. And the chicken tastes good when it comes out of that. I got to put some salt in there. I'm gonna put some, a uh, little bit of onion powder, just so that garlic won't be lonesome all by itself in there, you know. Let's get this stirred up good. You think I'm not gonna break that up the wrong? How you going? Let's start the boil and that'll broke it, that'll broke it up, I guarantee. Then all oh, get in there, get in there, get in there now. You know something? Let's try and act smart with me. It ain't gonna get but not gonna do it. I'm gonna get it all out of there. There you go. That's onion powder. I need every bit of it in it. Must have been a little damp when we put it in there. So it won't act like that. Stir. Always stir. I put a little dried mint, about oh, this is not quite a teaspoonful, about a half a teaspoonful in there and stir that in. Go eat on. Mm-hmm. 
Let's get, let's broke up that something now. How we going? I'm gonna put some dried parsley in there too. And it, it, uh, it is very good seasoning dried parsley. That's about a half a cup of dried parsley. It's just that many chicken wings. You can look to it hardly. And it, and it doesn't look bad in, in the uh, consomme when it's through, too. Got to put a little salt in it, just a little salt. Salt to taste, my taste. I'm going to put just about a teaspoonful of salt. And I know you don't think that's a teaspoonful. Some of it just doubt and Thomas and Thomasina. But I'm going to show you that that is a teaspoonful of salt. Exactly. With three extra grams. <laughs> that's all the salt it'll need. Now, I've got to put a little cayenne pepper in there, but somebody can talk about it, but not much. That's hardly none. Not too hot. You know, Cajun people don't like food too hot. They like it well seasoned and tasty. But if you get too much pepper, they're just like anybody else. They don't like it. I don't like it either. Come on now, let's. Now we're going. I got something else I got to cook. I got to tell a story about this next one, too. Now, I'm going to put the lid on that and I'm going to cut the fire down. I got to cut that fire down some because that'll boil all over the stove. And I'd have to clean it up, and I ain't in the mood of cleaning up any stove, I can tell you that. So sit down and find the thing and put it on the old real low. No, put it on lower than that. Put it on simmer, 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 simmer. Now I can see that flame right there. Close enough, close enough. Let me move this stuff out of my way. Put it over here in this thing. Put this with it. I'm gonna leave the salt and the red pepper there because I'm gonna use some more of that in something in, in okra and crawfish and mushroom. Now that sounds like it may be delicious and it is delicious. Believe me it is. We put this in here. Let me get my recipe. I, I watch my recipe because when you write as many of them as I have, it ain't a way to remember them. Into here, I'm gonna put okra. I better tell you that story. Once there was an old mama crawfish, you know, who took a three little baby crawfish out to see the world for the first time, you know? And they were going through the pasture, going real, slow looking, she was explaining this and explaining that. And they come up on a cow, and boy, those three little baby crawfish, zoom, high gear reverse, got out of there in a hurry. And she ran back to him and got him, said, what's the matter with you? What that is, my mom, what that is, eh? Oh, she said, that's a cow, and a cow don't eat crawfish. Come on, let's go. So they walked some more, about a couple of more acres, and a great big mule was there. And them two little baby, three little baby crawfish, zoom, I give her a voice some more. And she ran back and said, what in the world is the matter with you children? Huh? What's wrong with you? What that is, my mama? Oh, she said, that's a mule. And a mule don't eat crawfish, you know. Come on, let's go. I've got to show you this world and before dark. And they went, but didn't go very far. And the old mama crawfish said, let's put it in high gear reverse now, children, too. What you see right there is a Cajun, and he'll eat anything in this world. <laughs> <laughs> Into this right here, I'm going to put some water. Got to put a little water, water. Or I'm going to put uh, mushroom stock or water. Put that in there. And I got to turn that fire on and get that to sizzling. Can't help but get the right one there, you know. <laughs> Come on, water, let's get going. And into this, I'm going to put eight cups of cut okra. Eight cups, and that is so cold. I mean, it's thawed, but it's still cold as, you know. 
Let's get to cooking. That's beautiful okra. Oh, baby, it start boiling. Start boiling right now. And I'm going to put two cups of chopped canned tomatoes. And I'm going to stir it. It's canned tomatoes that are chopped real good. Got to get it all. Don't mess around with that now. And stir. That ding -de -de -de. Now into that, I'm gonna put two cups of chopped mushrooms. Now I like shiitake mushrooms, but I don't have them this morning. These are the regular ones that you can get in any store that has any mushrooms at all. They'll have them. To stir. We're gonna put these mushrooms in there. Mix them up good. They, they taste good. Mushrooms have a good flavor. And in different kinds. Have the ones you gather in the woods are so good. I can't gather them. I don't go out there. I, I find the wrong ones. You sure as hell. <laughs> but these are good. These are not chopped. They're sliced. Sliced mushrooms. They'll pick up the flavor, though. And they will add to the flavor. Now into that, I'm gonna put two cups of chopped onion. Without onion, whew, it wouldn't be worth a damn. Onion improve anything. I could, I don't like a potato salad that doesn't have onion in it. You get them in some restaurant, they're afraid people get offended if they got onion. But you know, people like I do, excuse me, they, you know, they ain't gonna get offended. They're gonna eat the hell out of them onion, no matter what you got in. <laughs> Let's go. Mm -hmm. Stir it up good, you stand, so it can't argue with you. Now, believe it or not, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put a teaspoonful of garlic. Come here, baby. Chopped garlic, chopped real fine. Get all of it. Garlic goes with onions. Onions go with garlic. And I like them both. I like an onion sandwich with a little garlic like that put on it. It's awful good. You eat that at night when there's nobody around. It won't say anything to you, but you smell like garlic. Sure. Sure do. Just eat some. <laughs> now into that, I'm going to put just a little cup of dry white wine. Isn't that great? Mm-hmm. Now, let's stir that in there good. That's smelling good already. Don't smell that? Oh, I smell it, and it's good too, yeah. Whew. I got to put some salt on that. Salt to taste is what it says here. I ain't gonna put the crawfish in there yet. I got to get this cook a little bit first. Yeah, but salt to taste, and I'm gonna do it. Just I'm gonna put a teaspoonful of salt. I already showed you this a teaspoonful. Not an extra grain in that. Not in the one. Just a couple. Hands are clean, believe me. I wash them more than anybody I know. Keep them clean. Now, I could put a little hot pepper in that, but some people may not like that, so I'm not gonna put it in there right now. But what I'm going to do, I'm gonna let that cook a little bit. I think I'll put the lid on the top and bring it to a boil. And the best way to do this is to you put everything in there except the crawfish. And you cook until the okra is tender. And that means the onion will be tender too. There's an onion trying to get away from me. Come in here. Man, it wasn't no work. Right on the spoon. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 
and we put the lid on this and let it cook a little bit. I'll tell you all the story. Maybe two of them need a bit of telling. But I'm not going to put any hot pepper on it. It doesn't need it. It does not need it at all. And my nose is athletic, you know, Olympic style, running. <laughs> Hay fever or something like that. I don't know what. I would like to tell you a story about three Cajuns that were at the female women's hospital in Baton Rouge, waiting for their wives who were in another room waiting to deliver. And I don't mean groceries, no. <laughs> in a few minutes, the nurse come out and said, Mr. Malanchon, hey, baby, hey, hey, what I got? What I got, baby, what I got, what I got? She said, you got twins, Mr. Malanchon. What you said? You got twins. Twins, that's right, twins. Twins, that's right, twins. A beautiful girl and a handsome young man. Lovely twin. Did I understood you to say twin? That's right. For true, I got twins. That's right. You got twins. You guarantee I got twins? I guarantee you got twins. Well, it's only right and proper. I should have twins. I'm the head baseball scout for the Minnesota Twins baseball team in South Louisiana, and I should have twins. He turned around and muttered two cages and gave each one of them two cigars, and he left just proud as he could be to have twins. A few minutes, the same nurse come out and said, Mr. Bourgeois, hey, baby, hey, what I got, huh? You got more than one, too, Mr. Bourgeois. More than one, too, what you mean? I got twins? She said, no, you got triplets, you got three of them. Then I understood you to said, I got three? That's right, you got three. For true, I got three. For true, you got three. Three, 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 three. You guarantee I got three? I guarantee you got three. Well, it's only right and proper I should have. Tree. I'm the head sailing in there for the 3M company in South Louisiana. I should have three. He turned that other kid and gave him three cigars. He was hitting the door. He said, where the hell are you going? He said, I'm leaving you. I'll drive a truck for the 7-Up company. <laughs> you got to cook a little faster than that. I got to put you on a little faster than that. Now, now, now you're going. Whoo wee yeah. Put this pot on there better too. In just a few moments, I'm gonna if I if I can see that that okra is tender, I'm gonna put them crawfish in there and mix it all together some more, you know. And it's good. It tastes good. It looks pretty, and it tastes better than it looks. I'll tell you that for true. Now I got to see how that chicken is doing on that contraband while I'm up to do that too. All right, man, you got to come to a better boil than that. I don't want it to boil over, though. It's hot. It's hot. Now, into this right here in just a few moments, I'm going to put a pound of peeled crawfish that have been peeled and deveined. <laughs> Whatever that means. Now, we got a tasting spoon here. That okra, that okra's getting tender. And it's boiling. It's boiling up a storm there. This is a tasting spoon. I love to taste. It's hot. Mm-hmm, <laughs> tastes good. And I'm gonna have to put that crawfish in there. Just a minute, I'm gonna stir it one more once. It's boiling now, like it should. When you see those onions are clearing up, getting clear, that means that okra gonna get clear too. Not clear like onion, but clear like okra. Let me put that there. And I'm gonna put these crawfish on there with the fat and all. Now that doesn't have to stay in there but about 20 minutes. Maybe 30, but 20 minutes is about the right, right amount of time. But you don't want your crawfish to come apart. Or do you want them to get tough, 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 tough? It ain't, it ain't good, no. All right. Not that pretty. Can you all smell that? I hope so. Oh, yeah. Whew. 
I think I ought to put a little hot sauce in there just a little bit, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to use my want power. I've got a lot of want power. Most people got willpower. That means you will do most anything. <laughs> want power means you ain't going to do it. All right, now you're looking good there. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Put the lid, cut the fire down a little bit. I got, I got to stir that chicken and get it going better than it's doing right now, I can tell you that. Oh, yeah. I want to tell you a story before I get over that. I want to tell you one quick story. I got a friend that fished down in that river where near where I lived in French Settlement a long time ago. And he'd go fishing, and every time he got back to the to Port Vincent where he launched his boat, he always had a boatload of fish, all kind of fish. Gar, shoe pick, some people call them grinnel, big mouth bass, little mouth bass, brims, succulent, that's a, a crappie or a white perch, depending on where you're from. Sometimes even a little alligator about four or three feet long. And he uh, come back there one day and the game warden was there. He said, man, you caught some fish. He said, you damn right. He said, I would like to go with you sometime. Be glad to have you, warden. When you go in some more? Tomorrow morning, 3 o'clock a.m. in the morning. You be here at 3 o'clock, you can go. If you ain't here, you ain't going. He won't say, I'll be there. I'll guarantee I'll be right there. He said, well, I'll be leaving 3 o'clock. Next morning at 3 o'clock, the game warden was there. And they got on that boat and they started down the Meat River. It's going down there, and it's dark at 3 o'clock in the morning when the moon goes down down there. Believe me, it's dark. Dark is the inside of a cow. <laughs> but he's got about a tree line, and just as daylight, he cut the motor, chuck out the anchor, reached right in front with him, and got a little brown box about one feet long and a half a feet high or deep. Reaching in, got a stick of dynamite. He stuck a little fuse in there, a little short fuse in there, and then put a cap and put in that short fuse in that cap and then <laughs> crimp it down real good with his teeth. Puff on his cigar, put it on that little short fuse, chunk it out and then me real bloom. <laughs> Fish everywhere. He's picking them up with both hands, put them in the boat. Put him in the boat. That game warden couldn't say a word. He said, man, finally, he said, man, don't you know that's against the law? Don't you know I'm the game warden? I'm going to have to put you on the jail. You ain't supposed to do that, no. My friend didn't say a word. He read and got that little box again. He got another stick of dynamite, put another cap in that, another little short fuse. Grip it down real good. <sighs> Puff on his cigar, put a little short fuse. Chunk it, put, put that in the hand of that game warden and say, look, you're going to talk a fish. <laughs> Let me pour myself a little wine. That is a, a red wine. I like red wine more than white. That's how come we got red wine. And I got this beautiful consomme. I got to taste that to see just exactly what it is. Oh, that's good, yeah. Mm-hmm-mm. The crumb of crackers up in that is even more better. I like it just like it is, with crackers or without crackers. Mm -hmm. Now here is a little, a little bit of that. I'm not going to put that in there. Let me put my napkin like I'm supposed to, like a gentleman. <laughs> put that there. Tuck that in my belt so it won't drop on the floor, no. Let's go. Now, come here to me. Now, this is the okra and crawfish and mushroom that I fixed earlier, so I'd be sure I had some for me to eat now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, man, I guarantee. Ooh. Come on here, okra. Mm, good thing I had that napkin. Let me crawfish, crawfish. I want you to know that that is damn good stuff. <laughs> and with a little sip of wine to help you. <laughs>